Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all again for this next episode from TransConnect. I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary, and I'll be accompanied with my colleague, Dr. Ankita Sharma, who will be talking about paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria and Donut Landsteiner test. So, a simple test and a very simple topic, but you need to do the test, and this test is about this peculiar antibody which is biphasic in nature. So, a small acronym for the PCH that is polyclonal IgG against P antigen. So, if you want to remember it, you can say that P stands for P antigen, C stands for the classical complement that it activates, and H stands for hemolysis, which is generally intravascular and transient and also for hemoglobinuria, which may occur in this condition. Now, taking you through the donut landsteiner antibody itself, this peculiar antibody, I would now call upon Dr. Ankita, who will be taking you through this antibody. After this, we will be discussing about the PCH itself. So, over to you, Dr. Ankita. Hi, everyone. So, today we will be talking about the donut landsteiner antibody. So as we know, this is a very classic antibody produced in proxysmal cold hemoglobinuria and it is known as a donut Lansteiner antibody. Uh, specificity wise, it is an autoantibody in nature with anti-P specificity. These antibodies, they are not identifiable using the regular serological techniques. The specificity is only demonstrated in the DL test, which is the test used to confirm the diagnosis of PCH. So as we have discussed the acronym for this, P stands for polyclonal IgG against the P antigen. C, that is the complement, classical complement uh, pathway that is activated. And H is for hemolysis, which is intravascular transient in nature. Now, this is a diagrammatic representation of the same. Now, as you know, the DL antibodies, they are produced in response to any uh, viral infection. Could be a common upper respiratory tract infection like measles, or some in uh, definite flu syndrome, any viral illness, mumps, etc. So these antibodies are produced in response to this. And then at low temperatures, the DL antibodies bind to the P antigen present on the RBCs. That is by lower temperatures, we mean temperatures below 37 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, the third thing is the complement that is C3D binds to this DL antibody. So this is the complement. This is the antibody antigen complex. The complement binds to this. And then when it is exposed to 37 degrees Celsius, there occurs the red cell lysis in the circulation, that is the intravascular hemolysis. Now coming to the concept of the DL test. So as we know, it is a test uh, specific for PCH. It is a biphasic antibody in nature. So what is the exact mechanism of the test? So first thing is the serum of the patient. It is cooled at 4 degrees Celsius and incubated with the P antigen positive RBCs. At 4 degrees, what happens is the IgG antibody, it binds to the RBC and it fixes the complement and it remains bound to the red cells. So when the sample is uh, warmed at 37 degrees Celsius, the classical complement pathway is activated and it undergoes a complement mediated hemolysis. And this hemolysis as we've discussed, it's intravascular and transient in nature. Now coming to the uh, steps, how to proceed with the DL test, the requirements. First is the specimen. So we need a serum separated from a freshly collected blood sample maintained at 37 degrees Celsius. Next is we need freshly collected pool normal sera known to lack any unexpected antibodies and this is to be used as a source of complement. Why this complement is a uh, source of complement is required? It's because most of the times the patients will not be having adequate amount of complement. Therefore, you need to have a normal uh, sera to make up for that deficiency. Next is we require a 50% suspension of the washed group O red cell that express the P antigen. That is the uh, any antibody detection cells can be used for this. Now coming to the procedure. So it is a slightly tedious procedure. However, it is simple. Uh, you need to have three uh, sets of test tubes, each set having three tubes. So we label them as one set one, two, three, each having three test tubes. That is one A, one B, one C. 2A, 2B, 2C and similarly 3A, 3B, 3C. Now two tubes A and B of each set, that is the first two test tubes of each set, we are adding 10 volumes of the patient's serum. Vol by volumes, basically 10 volumes or 10 drops of the patient's serum. Now two, two, uh, two tubes B and C of each set, we are adding 10 volumes of the fresh normal serum. 
so basically the set b uh, is having both the patient serum as well as the normal serum now to all the tubes we are adding one volume of 50% suspension of washed p positive red cells and they are mixed properly now comes the uh, incubation so you have to place the three one tubes that is the set of 1a 1b 1c in a bath of melting ice for about 30 minutes and then at 37 degrees celsius for 1 hour similarly we place the three two tubes the second set in a bath of melting ice and keep them like that for about 90 minutes and place the three tubes of the three third set at 37 degrees celsius and then keep them at 37 for 90 minutes after which we have to gently mix all the tubes and centrifuge them and examine the supernatant fluid for hemolysis now the interpretation of the test the dl test result is considered positive when the patient serum with or without the added complement causes hemolysis in the tubes that were incubated first in the melting ice bath and then at 37 degrees celsius that is the tubes 1a and 1b so what we are trying to say here is either the patient serum is having the complement that is set 1a or if it is uh, having i mean uh, it is lacking the complement in sufficient quantities that is where we are adding the pooled normal serum that is set 1b so basically with or without added complement is uh, uh, tube 1a and 1b respectively and it's causing the hemolysis in these these tubes only and there is no hemolysis in any of the tubes maintained throughout at 37 degrees celsius that is the third set or in melting ice bath that is the second set the test once uh, the tubes 1c 2c and 3c they basically serve as controls of the normal sera complement source and should not manifest hemolysis now as you can see here in the diagram this was the set 1 that's 1a 1b 1c and here we can see hemolysis is uh, observed in uh, 1a and 1b tube whereas the rest of the tubes do not demonstrate any hemolysis so this is a positive dl test which is confirmatory for PCH. So uh, now some points to note. To avoid the loss of antibody by autoadsorption before testing, the patient's blood should be allowed to clot at 37 degrees Celsius and then the serum must be separated from the clot at this temperature. Patients, as we've discussed, patients who have PCH, they may show low levels of the serum complement. Therefore, a fresh normal serum must be included in the reaction as a source of the active complement. Now, if we have only a limited amount of blood, like let's say it's from a young uh, patient, a small child, we have very limited amount of blood sample, then we should set up the first set, that's 1A, 1B, 1C, and the third set, 3A and 3B. And if there is only enough serum for the two tests, like about 20 drops or so, so we set up tubes 1B, 1C, and 3B. And lastly, to demonstrate the P-specificity of the DL antibody, ABO compatible P red cells must be tested in a second set of tubes that's A1, A2 and A3. No, no lysis should be developing in these tubes and this confirms the P specificity of the antibody. So this was about the DL test. And now I'll hand over to Dr. Mohit Chaudhary and he'll be discussing about the paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria. Thank you. Hi, so now that we have discussed about the Donut Lansdenner antibody, let's discuss about the pathology itself. It's the PCH or the paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria. As the name suggests, it is paroxysmal. It is not happening all the time and it is uh, manifested with the uh, hemoglobinuria that is the hemoglobin in urine and it is cold so you can see that although the antibody is igg it behaves like a cold antibody so pch is the least common type of aiha or the autoimmune hemolytic anemia with an incidence between one to two percent most often it is seen in children with viral illness such as measles mumps chickenpox etc and historically it was related with syphilis but with the uh, with the uh, decrease in the incidence of the syphilis itself or the treponema pallidum infection uh, the uh, the PCH is no longer commonly reported in relation to the syphilis. So it's an acute hemolytic anemia, which now almost ex exists exclusively in children and young adults. And it's almost, almost always represents a transient disorder in which there is an intravascular hemolysis 
mostly, but there can be some amount of extravascular hemolysis when there is not complete formation of membrane attack complex. And uh, this is when it uh, is a transient disorder. So what is the pathophysiology behind it? Of course, you we have already discussed this biphasic autohemolysin or the cold autoantibody, which is the donut Lansteiner antibody. This cold antibody binds to the patient's RBCs at lower temperature. You can see that it remains bound there, fixes the complement. And when there is conducive temperature, let's say around 37 degree, it causes the lysis through membrane attack complex. Most of the time, this red cell lysis is complement mediated classical pathway intravascular hemolysis. But when the membrane attack complex is not completely formed, it can also cause extravascular hemolysis, wherein the intermediate complement components, uh, co components remain on the red cell surface and are recognized by the splenic macrophages. In contrast to the other cold reactive agglutinins, the antibody in PCH is an IgG immunoglobulin with biphasic activity. The signs and symptoms are paroxysmal. There are intermittent episodes of hemoglobinuria. Patient may have acute attacks characterized by fever, shaking chills, malaise, abdominal cramps, and back pain. So all the signs of intravascular hemolysis are present like hemoglobinemia, hemoglobinuria, bilirubinemia, decreased haptoglobin, increase in bilirubin. So all these things are there, and but the condition may vary depending upon the severity and the frequency of the attack. The results is severe and rapidly progressive anemia with hemoglobin levels frequently as low as 4 to 5, milli, 4 to 5 gram per deciliter. However, since it is transient, it may resolve in few hours or persist for few days. Sometimes there may be splenomegaly and renal insufficiency along with hyperbilirubinemia. So this is the peripheral sphere. A very characteristic finding in peripheral sphere, which may be asked as a viva question is the neutrophilic or monocytic erythrophagocytosis. You can see that the neutrophil is being engulfed by the uh, RBC. So neutrophilic erythrophagocytosis. And you can see that sometimes because of the cold nature, the, there may be an autoagglutination like you have in a cold agglutinin disease. So what is the treatment? Treatment of PCH is, we know that the hemolysis is usually self-limiting and transient. So you can wait and watch if there is no, it's not a very severe attack. The immunosuppression is generally not required because it is a transient uh, pathology. Supportive measures like keeping the patient warm always help and reassures the patient that it is going to be okay. But if you anemia is severe, blood transfusion may be advised. The problem here is we cannot find P positive uh, unit, uh, uh, P negative unit because most of the donors are P positive here. So, but the but the relief here is that you can safely transfuse the P positive units as long as you are using a blood warmer and the patient is kept warm because it's a cold antibody. In very very severe cases, you can even uh, use uh, rutuximab, which is anti-CD20, uh, which is mostly given in refractory paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria. And last but not the least, like the drug that you give in PNH. You can give hair also that is eculizumab, which acts on the complement. So this is the main treatment uh, modalities that are available in PCH. These are the references where we have uh, uh, referred for this uh, presentation. I hope it was useful to you. If there are any questions regarding PCH uh, or regarding DL antibody, kindly feel free to write on the chat box and do subscribe this channel. Thank you so much. Have a good day and happy learning.